Um, so uh, perhaps uh, I'll get, I don't believe you're, I believe you're unable to mute yourselves. I don't, I, I think you are, right? I, I saw, um, uh, David, are you able to unmute yourself? Just, just a little test here. Okay. Yep. I see people are able to unmute themselves. Awesome. Awesome. So why don't we, um, I'll, I'll start us off here on terms of inter, uh, introductions and then we can go uh, around. Um, um, I'll, I'll uh, we can invite each other to, to uh, share. So of course, my name is Casey Carbone and I serve um, as the pastor of the first Presbyterian church of Mayo Pack, and uh, I also now have the privilege of serving you all in the Hudson River Presbytery as the um, IT uh, communications facilitator and helping to organize events like this where we can help support each other during these times of, uh, of changing landscape still during ministry. Currently, the church here in Mayo Pack um, is worshiping in a hybrid model, outdoors and virtual, um, not worshiping inside the sanctuary yet, doing outdoor worship um, while offering a live stream option for people as well who uh, do not feel comfortable or are unable to do so um, as we've picked up some new friends along the way who don't live nearby. Um, so that's a little bit of, of uh, who I am and um, the context I'm currently serving in. Um, I think I'd like to invite um, Lou Ann, if you would be willing to share, uh, again, um, for Martha who came in, we're just sharing, um, who we are, what church and, uh, what we're doing now in, in regards to worship. So, uh, Lou Ann. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm Lou Ann Panarotti. I'm the pastor at Pleasant Plains Presbyterian Church in Statsburg, New York. Um, we are still just doing virtual worship on Facebook Live. Um, and, and actually not even broadcasting from the church, but that's the next step. Um, we're having some issues with um, uh, um, the signal. We need some boost of our, uh, and, we're, and so we're working with folks to figure out how to get the boost we need so that we can uh, do that well. Then um, the plan is then for um, a reader and the organist and I to go back in and, and have a couple of uh, tries at just broadcasting from there. Then. Um, the elders and the deacons uh, doing sort of a dry run uh, th uh, with uh, people in the place. And then um, we'll see, you know, we're looking at perhaps in October, uh, welcoming folks into in-person worship. Uh, I have to admit, I'm not totally on board with it. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're inching, inching toward it, but I'm, you know, I have concerns about that. But, uh, and of course, as you said, we, we want to uh, keep including people. We've got people in Florida and Georgia and, and, and Jersey and all over, you know, joining us now. And so we do want to do that well and not, you know, leave those folks behind. So um, that's our, that's our story. Uh, let's see. So, Tom Buchanan, come on down. Good afternoon. Um, I am serving as the pastor of the Presbyterian Church of New Rochelle. Um, and we are currently doing Zoom only. Um, and there's little energy, really little enthusiasm uh, for going back in the sanctuary. Um, I think a primary driver of that is that we are a nesting church and the Koreans worship before us and after us. Uh, and there are two other congregations that worship, although not, not on Sundays in the sanctuary. Um, so, you know, I think there's some hesitancy around that, that we're, um, that we sometimes labor under this misperception that we are in charge of anything, but um, certainly not in charge of the sanctuary. Um, but there is um, a, a push by both boards to have one uh, in-person service outdoors. Uh, I'm not quite sure I figured out what the real impetus is. Um, because we'll all be in mass and we'll all be a good distance. And, and I'd love to follow up on how you have been handling music and other things, but um, I've suggested that there probably won't be any music and that it will be um, something quite um, different than 
what we've been doing um, in the sanctuary and virtually. Um, several people have already told me they won't be coming, um, in part because um, being outdoors is uh, sort of an added um, issue for those who don't walk well or who use canes or walkers. Um, and so it's, it's pretty complicated, uh, but there is one additional um, motivation, and that is um, a young family that would like to um, baptize uh, a baby. And so uh, I, I bend a lot of rules that I'm not going to confess to here, um, but one of the ones that I don't bend on is, um, you know, private uh, baptisms. And so if we're meeting virtually, how do, how do we do that? And the answer is we don't. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing communion. I've managed to get around that, but uh, not, not baptism. So this would be an opportunity um, to, to have a baptism. Um, uh, the, wedding was <laughs> the wedding was just last week. Um, and so uh, we did that outside, and that, that went OK. Um, and so how do we um, put this together? How, how do we um, do it safely? Um, and you know, I think I would be very surprised if we get more than 10 or 12 that actually show up for outdoor worship. Um, but I think that would, um, that would satisfy my need to um, be in community. Um, and so I think under those circumstances, we could distance fairly easily. And as long as the, the family pod sat off by themselves. So anyway, so um, there's that. And, and that would obviously um, ask for a hybrid um, presentation so that others who weren't there could share in, you know, kind of a meaningful um, and memorable service. Um, and since I've already seen Stephanie once this morning, um, I can't wait to see her again and um, to speak to this. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Stephanie Graham, Peak Skill, um, pastor there. Um, last month, we started hybrid worship uh, under the tent outside and on Zoom. It got too hot, so we went back to Zoom. For the past three weeks, we've been doing hybrid worship in the sanctuary and on Zoom. Uh, we've had one baptism inside this, an adult baptism. Um, talked extensively with them about how to do it, what made them feel comfortable. They were very comfortable. It went okay. We have an excellent task force that's following the rules. We are concerned, however, about the fall and the winter. Um, we're thinking we will, well, the task force has decided we would go through October 11th. Um, in the sanctuary and then go back on Zoom. Some members of the congregation are very upset about that because they want to be in their sanctuary. So I am really interested in learning how to edit uh, recorded services so that um, for spirit talk and for, so we can add more to our worship service, recorded music, um, various pieces. I need to learn how to, to connect that so that I don't have to, we don't have to hire somebody to do it. Thank you. Um, David, why, why don't you go oh, I'm supposed to, oh, that's, that's, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I would have chosen David anyway. Okay. <laughs> David Frost, I'm serving at uh, Patterson um, Church of Putnam County. And we have been, um, <clears throat> for the last month or a little more perhaps, in meeting uh, outside, um, outside of our church in the parking lot. And I've been doing a uh, YouTube, uh, audio, you know, a online service now for whatever it's been, however many weeks. And we have not tried to do the live stream because of, of part of our uh, identity as a church has been um, a deep prayer life. And we don't want to be mentioning names online. And so we, and, and the other part is that I'm a singer songwriter and I don't want to put anything online that's gonna get me in trouble. We do have a CCLI license. Um, so there are a number of songs available for that, but I also have a lot of songs I've written and a lot of old hymns that I use online. Um, so they're, they're a little bit different in, in nature. The, the one at the, the outdoor service runs about a half an hour. The YouTube service is a little longer um, 
and we've started doing communion outdoors. Um, I brought bread that I had baked and sliced with gloves on and a pair of tongs. And we, and we did not try to do the, the, the cup, the wine. We just did the bread. Um, and that seemed to be satisfactory for the people outdoors. The indoor the Zoom or online run, rather, I do the whole thing, um, both bread and wine. So um, it's been working out all right. I'm getting some pushback from certain members who would like to go back in the sanctuary. But I'm like Luann, I'm not really that comfortable yet. And so we're looking into air purification systems um, and perhaps moving indoors. Our church, if you did six or eight feet apart, would probably hold 30, 35 people, um, which is about the most we would get on a Sunday. Um, but at, like everyone else, we picked up, you know, a bunch of other people from around the country, um, which is kind of nice, which for me is really showing that the, if, if the word gets out in several ways, that's a good thing. So we're, we're, um, we're okay. Um, we're wrestling with the fall with what that means because it's going to get cold soon and uh, not sure how it'll turn out. But the council is resistant but respectful of my boundaries. So <laughs> um, let me see. How about uh, Lynn Boyer? Is he still there? You're on mute, Lynn. Oh, I think you're still muted, Lynn. My host. Oh, so. there you go. There you go. You're unmuted. Okay. <laughs> I'm staying in supply at Brewster, and um, we're strictly holding uh, Zoom meetings, and there's no interest uh, because we have uh, such a small space where we um, meet inside, and there's no interest in going back there at this time. So I'm interested really in the technology of uh, holding some sort of um, modified, let's say, uh, Zoom and uh, a few people that are going to participate in the worship. That's where we're going. Thank you. Uh, I don't think Ellen's had a chance yet. Good. Thanks, Lynn. Hi, everyone. I'm at Larchmont Avenue Church, and we have been doing online worship since March, and it's been, it's evolved from uh, efforts with Zoom and then Facebook Live, and now we're doing Facebook premiere of pre-recorded worship, and it's really excellent quality. And Stephanie, I can say to you that what we've used is Adobe Premiere software to edit and splice together all the parts of worship. We even have our soloists who are paid, each four section leaders, give a recording in their, in their homes and they upload it to Dropbox and then we download it into this Adobe Premiere software and our church communications director does this work of producing a videotape and she spends all day Friday and it's done. And then we launch it on Facebook premiere. So it's timed to be released at our usual worship time at 10 AM. Then the only thing I don't like about it is it's a Facebook product that comes out. So some people aren't, just put off because they think they can't use Facebook if they don't have an account. This is a public Facebook access point, but still. And then we get comments throughout, which can be heartwarming, but we have some one person who's sort of a comment bomber that is a problem person. So I'm, I'm w wishing we had just gone onto YouTube um, for our premiere launch, but that's just a note for you. In uh, end of August, the session, just three members of my 12 member session were very vocal about wanting to go into in-person sanctuary worship. And we have a very large sanctuary, but in the abundance of caution and really spacing people out carefully, every third pew and having you know, diagonal setups of seating, we can only fit 50 people, even though on a Christmas Eve, we'll have 500 in there, but it, it's really just 50 
we're going to try it this weekend and I'm sad about it because and so is my staff because we cannot do the music that we typically would do so we've decided not to have any singing because we don't think it's safe not even our soloists and we did buy a plastic shield for them to sing behind but we got another congregant saying that's not even safe the way these droplets of water can hang in the air so so we've got the skim down liturgy for Sunday that's it's bare and um, and then I, I have a new youth director and she's not comfortable coming because she's sharing a house with four other people and so she won't be we won't have that elements so it's just it's just gonna be me and my piano player basically it's just it's not what I hoped so from this conversation today I was I was wondering if anyone has experience with using live stream in the sanctuary. So we have Boxcaster as our new live stream service. And my music director is reluctant to have any recorded music, but maybe if it was our own musicians pre-recorded, if, if I could understand if there's a way to insert a recording into a live stream of with Boxcaster, that might be something we could explore because my other alternative is to go back to session at the end of the month and say, this is just not good. We're, we actually will have worse worship. And um, so I, my staff is not happy with this move to go inside. And we don't have an outdoor space in Larchmont. It's just too urbanized and the church goes right up to the perimeters of our property, so. Yeah, uh, before you invite, uh... Ed or, or Martha, I was going to say, you can you can also schedule a premiere video on YouTube if you have a YouTube channel. So you, you could do both, hypothetically. And uh, unfortunately, yes, in, in YouTube comments, it, it won't keep out that one person <laughs> coming who, who makes that one comment. Um, and then also we could touch base uh, as well, Ellen, because uh, there there is ways that you can if you're using Boxcast, which is a platform I've used before, you can incorporate a pre-recorded video um, into that. Okay. Um, and and in general, for everyone, I would say yeah, avoid using pre-recorded music that's not your own recording, because <laughs> um, that is a, a great way to get flagged um, by Facebook or YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, so even on YouTube, if you post a premiere on YouTube, there's still a way to comment on it. Um, you, you 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 could turn off the right. live chat on on uh, yeah. on YouTube. On YouTube, you can. I don't think Facebook. I don't. I think it, it's on there. Yeah. But on YouTube, you can turn it off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's. But we did have really good success at making online pre-recorded worship videos, and it was great for this for me and the staff who would normally be there on a Sunday because then we were done by Thursday night. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we had our weekend sort of. We'd watch the service, but we didn't have to do anything. Too, yeah, too much more than that. So, yeah, let's hear from Martha. Do you have thoughts to share? Um, we've. I'm at um, First Presbyterian Church in Washingtonville and Bethlehem Presbyterian Church, and we have been blending worship for a long time. Um, Right now, um, Bethlehem is outside until World Communion Sunday, and then they're going to be inside. And the first went inside a week or so ago. Um, but here's how the blending is set up. I haven't really learned anything since the beginning, and that is one of the things that troubles me. The, I have a um, laptop, that is sitting in the front with and um, in front of the um, pulpit base. This is at Bethlehem outside. I have a laptop sitting in front of the outdoor pulpit with the um, zoom on it. And leaning against the laptop is a cell phone with Facebook Live on it. I, it should not need to be this way after all these months. I should have learned something that would have made not need to be like this. Um, but every, the things that I have um, worked with that I um, wanted to use OBS and, and I, I still hope that I'll be able to do that at some point, but um, the ways there have been 
like roadblocks every place I went. So that's one of the things. The other thing is we're still using public domain old hymns ever since March. And man, there are hundreds of them, but we're still tired of it. We'd like to sing something that was written in the last 60 or 70 years. And there's hundreds of those too, and, and we'd like to get on with it. Um, so I have that to think about. Um, so, and, and issues that have to do with going into the sanctuary and issues that have to do with um, trimming videos so that we don't get the whatever sounds of, especially now if we're going to be inside the sounds of people um, trying to exit quietly right past the computer before anyone can get to the computer to turn it off. Um, it would be even worse if they felt like they could speak because, but they don't because they're not supposed to say anything until they're outside. But if they did, we could very well want to edit anything that they happen to say mm -hmm. to each other that might not be in the very most Christian nature um, while they happen to be where the computer could pick them up. So we have that going on. And it's going to be more like that as first, um, first decision to stop pre-recording their service and go with um, with a, a live version of their indoor service is going to bring its own issues because they don't want the laptop right there in front. The way the church front is set up there, it would block their view of the pulpit unless I put it down so low that it looks like um, from the point of view of the people watching, like a small child sitting in the front row looking way up at everything. Um, so I have those issues with, with the blended. I just came today to see if I could learn anything. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, sorry. Did you have any? I was just going to invite Ed. I'm sitting here listening and laughing because I am serving as the moderator of Milton, who has not met since the middle of March. They are predominantly older than I am, which is ancient, and most of them have no tech, nor any interest in having any technology. And the ones that are younger are either going to a nearby church that is either Presbyterian or Methodist, or not going and looking for something online. So at this point, we are having no services whatsoever because they don't want to meet outside. And we, at this point, it's a very, very, very small congregation. Sometimes I preach to eight people. Um, it's just not worth it for them to go through all this prepping of the, of the sanctuary and everything else for the, if we, on a good day, 10 people. So we're not doing anything, but it's interesting to hear what's going on so that if we ever decide to do something, I have some idea what to do. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, exactly. And, well, that, and that's why I think it's, it's nice to be able to have this group where we can have a little bit of time to share what is going on and perhaps what ways we can continue sharing. Um, you know, so I think, you know, hearing a little bit, I'm modifying my schedule, <laughs> my agenda a little bit, but um, I think, you know, as we think about for folks who are worshiping, continuing to do virtual and people who are doing in-person worship, you know, I, I think one of the things I heard as a common thread is people who are also doing outdoor services. And as someone who has now done outdoor services since um, almost the beginning of July, I, I would offer this advice that if you don't have people who are willing to set up... <laughs> It's too much work and it's not, <laughs> it really is a lot of work. Um, you know, if you're, if you're setting up just for the service, you know, I think we, I think it's very realistic to make the adaptations you would need to have an outdoor service. But, you know, of course for us, though, an important uh, factor for us as we were thinking about doing outdoor worship was, well, we want people to also experience it at the same time compared to offering something that was maybe slightly more polished, but it would be a, a premiere video or a pre-recorded video. And so of course, then you, you know, when you're trying to set up for a live stream, you're trying to set up for worship, it's a lot and it's a lot to consider 
depending on where everyone is at in terms of the energy that they have to set something up. Um, and then of course, you know, I, I think I heard David and Tom talk about music, you know, and that's another thing that I, I think we all wrestle with. Um, for us, what we found uh, something that's worked for us in terms of outdoor worship, in terms of music is been, um, you know, whether myself, I'll, I'll lead some of the, the songs uh, and, and still encourage people to sing <laughs> from their home if they're watching virtually. Or, you know, we've been rotating some choir members uh, on a regular basis who also help uh, lead worship. Um, you know, I think as we all think about hybrid or virtual worship um, in terms of either uh, improving or thinking about things we might do, I think one of the things that is, you know, is always an important consideration is um, how we engage people in worship in a way that is virtual. Um, so, you know, like, to, to it's hard almost now for me since I guess I'm still relatively new uh, is to think back of, of well what was it like to just preach for you know 15 20 minutes to, to a group of people who were there in person but but now it's you know I you know when I plan out my sermon for Sunday morning you know I plan I try to plan two three even more slots where I'm talking to the people uh, who may be gathered outside in worship, but I'm specifically addressing people online. So, you know, like, uh, because we don't do Zoom, we use Facebook and YouTube, you know, I'll specifically look right at the camera and say, you know, well, you know, so why don't, you know, why don't you share whatever thought of it is whatever question I pose, you know, or invite them into that kind of space. And, you know, I, I'll say to them, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to go, I'll go back later after worship and, and read, you know, what you write and, you know, let's inviting that kind of space for a, a digital connection. Um, you know, it's, it's funny that we talk about church as well, because some of the things that we found success with also is for some of our people who worship online virtually um, and who do so via Facebook is um, they'll start watch parties with there are other friends online as the service is live. And so sometimes, actually, I think some of the stats we have for our online worship are um, soft because it doesn't include the people who are watching in these other simultaneous <laughs> viewing parties that are going on. Um, but it's, it's a fun way, fun, but also I think a meaningful way when friends are able to invite their friends to church and then have conversations about what happens in worship. Um, as well. And and so at least for, you know, some of what I try to incorporate in terms of a hybrid and even a virtual, I, and so I guess sort of without trying to ramble too much, you know, uh, but, but I think, I think what's almost important is to think of hybrid and virtual somewhat being in this weird flow state where you can go back, go back and forth between one or the other. Cause I think as, as I also heard Ellen and um, Stephanie and and some other folks say, you know, and, and Luann, you know, like we we may go back to worshiping in person, investing in a hybrid model, having the technology to do so, but then something may change, and we <laughs> will may and we may have to go back to worshiping virtually. But if we set up our hybrid worships in a way where we're either live streaming it or we um, have what's in place to record things and you know hopefully those transitions back and forth between one or the other isn't as rough as they were in the beginning um i think the last thing before i i, I share what was on the next part for us is that you know um i think for me the the reality of hybrid and virtual worship has been that there are going to be things that that don't happen <laughs> that i might want to see get done but because there's not the time, there's not the volunteer energy for it, or there are no volunteers who could do it. <laughs> Sometimes it's it's accepting that it's not going to get done that week, <laughs> the way that I would hope that it got done. Um, and so for us all, as we think about virtual and hybrid worship, you know, maybe it is, um, you know, throwing a Google slide or PowerPoint presentation together that we can screen share on Zoom 
and that we then live stream via, via Facebook within the Zoom platform. And I think that works. I think that we're, if, if we're intentional about how we're creating moments where we engage people virtually, I think that is really one of the biggest things where it's not them feeling like it's just another half hour or hour TV slot, <laughs> but something where they feel like you're engaging them. Um, I think that's, that's a big difference when we create those kind of environments in worship. Um, and so I'm, uh, I'm going to share something because I think we were going to say, you know, I think I was going to hold myself to sharing something positive that that's happening within worship uh, in this. And, and then I'm, I, I won't ask you all to go through a whole explanation, uh, but if you want to give us a, a short little snippet of what you feel like summarizes um, something that you want to share of, of what's going well, you think that you want to lift up, then then I think we can do that. But, you know, for, for me at the start, you know, I think part of it has been um, prayer life in terms of virtual in, in a congregation. I know um, we're very careful for our online and virtual worships that we, um, the only thing we lift up are first names. We don't and I know for some people that may even be, a, you know, that may be an, an area, but we lift up just people's names. And, you know, I know that for people that is a meaningful thing when they're watching online and they can hear that we're praying for them. Um, so for, for me, at least that has been one aspect of our virtual worship that seems to have been uh, meaningful and that I would uh, lift up during this time. Um, I think Ellen, uh, I would I would invite you to to lift up something uh, that you feel has been working for you. Yeah, I'm just very proud of my staff. Of amazing uh, joint effort to produce great worship, uh, and so the communication coordinator who watched endless hours of in you know YouTube videos on how to do a recorded using Adobe Premiere, like how to do it, because it's not intuitive. And so she managed that. It took about two months to get up to speed. And then also my um, my mu music director who learned some software editing of his own and was able to bring together the multiple section leaders to have four people on video and bring them together and have uh, people singing together virtually, also with musicians. but. Another nice thing just theologically that we just did on, on Sunday, the 13th of September, uh, potentially our final group, the online video, I, my Christian ed director is more uh, leaning more towards evangelical Christianity. And she had heard this wonderful song blessing done by 100 of the New York City churches that are mainly evangelical churches, like Redeemer and Liquid Church. And then, but there were 100 of them. So, I mean, it was really uh, amazing. They sang this blessing that may have been written by them as well. I'm not sure, but it, it's definitely contemporary Christian music sounding like, but also very gospel-y and just great voices. And there were times where there were, would you would hear different people sing, identifying who it was in their church for like a two minute, two second clip. And then there were four of these brief clips in different languages because there was a Dutch and a Hebrew and a Spanish and a Greek s song as well. And, and it was just very powerful. And it was, it was recorded at the end of the spring when COVID was just decimating New York City. I mean, there's this sense of where is God? And they had this refrain of God is here for you. God, and they just kept singing, God is here for you. I guess they were saying he is here for you, but it was evangelical, so okay. But they were, it was just beautiful. And um, so I, I give credit to my, my Christian ed director who pursued this dream of hers to include that video at the end of our worship as the postlude. And it took a while to get the music director to be like, he doesn't like other people's music and it's not, you know, classical instruments. But we agreed that if she could get permission from them and sort of license rights that we would put it in as soon as we got it. And it just turned out that on Sunday I was preaching from Jeremiah on, you know, pray for the welfare of your city and, you know, the exiles to continue life in your, your city and do, you know, thrive where you are. And, um, and that was essentially the blessing that was being sung 
by the 100 churches and we got the permission right <laughs> ahead of that Sunday. So we put it in and it was just very powerful the way it came together from our studying that text and then to hear it sung in a totally different vibrant way and every like all the comments afterward on Facebook was like wow like <laughs> how did you do that it's like so amazing and to see that there are a hundred other churches out there that are just as prayerful and faithful and and really uh, heartfelt singing that was just great yeah and I and I hope that that is something you know in your context you'll be able to keep doing is including videos like that even if it's not even if the people who are there in the sanctuary aren't able <laughs> to see it um, and hope to touch base with you on, on that at some point um, yeah. because it, it is something I think you'd be able to do because you don't or do you have um, a projector or screens in your church currently? No, we did uh, price okay. one and it was because it, we wanted the best model, of course. Yeah, and that was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah they get, they get prices. $12,000, yeah. so we didn't do it. But yeah, I mean, we could get to that place if we needed to but it's still pretty traditional congregation so. um Steph, stephanie i was going to jump to you for a moment and was going to ask you a quick question while i think while i think about it is um what type of computer are you using um hp hp okay mm -hmm. uh okay um i was just wondering because um yeah, because if you were using, uh, if you had Apple, for example, of course, it has the the iMovie built into it. And I was just wondering, because um, Adobe is a wonderful program, um, but I believe it is a, a subscription-based <laughs> model in terms of, of how they price it. You used, you used to be, this is where they get you, you used to be able to just buy it for a one-time fee, uh, but then they changed it to, to a, a yearly or monthly subscription. So that just may be a, a consideration. Yeah, I did um, get, I bought Adobe Premiere Elements for my own yeah. use, which is a one-time, but I just haven't had the time to teach myself. I'm, <laughs> I just wanted to figure it out and I, it's so daunting, but that yeah. might be one way to do the one time, one day prize. So what are the possibilities of a workshop on um, Adobe Premiere? Because all of this sounds challenging to me. You, you know what? Um, that's something we could look into. Yeah, because unfortunately, I, I, am, I feel very comfortable talking about technology and equipment and things like that and live streaming. But I, when it comes to video editing, um, that isn't my forte. <laughs> Um, but that is something I think we could probably look into, though. Um, okay, that's good. Do you want me to share my one thing? Yeah, I'd love for you to share your one thing. <laughs> um, blessing stamps and envelopes. Having people lift them up as we um, hear the doxology being played, because the giving has been wonderful. And so making that a, a special mm. part of the service blessing those and our um, musician on Zoom, when he was on Zoom, his wife is an incredible soloist. So they were able to present the music and he has upgraded his um, technology. So the music had gotten really, really good. But now that we're back in the sanctuary, she doesn't feel comfortable coming. So we have a violinist and the keyboard that are playing. That's good, but we're, we're missing out. It seems like you can be a lot more creative online now than you can with hybrid worship. Because the people in the sanctuary can miss out on so much. And you wouldn't be the first person to say that. Um, there is a lot of creativity when it comes to putting together an entirely virtual service, uh, as Ellen attested to before. Um, and it is a lot, you know, I think everything is possible. You, I think you can maintain that same level of creativity, but I think it does take some more reconfiguring <laughs> of, uh, of, uh, of resources. Um, uh, sorry, did you have something else? Uh, that's it, Tom. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, I, I would say that um, Zoom has actually been pretty good for us. And, and the reason is, <clears throat> I think there is that spontaneity and that, that connection. Um, we chat with each other 10 minutes before um, we do a prelude, a pre-recorded um, prelude. Um, the soloists will sing the hymns. 
that we play. Um, I think I'm the only one that actually mutes and sings along, but um, it's available to do that. And, um, uh, and there's no real accompaniment. Uh, you can hear something in the background, but it's basically a, a, a macapella solo. Um, and that and that all works fine. And then you know we have a picture of a, a great spread from uh, when we used to have coffee hour in church, and um, we unmute and and chat and and catch up with each other. Um, and people's faces are there, and we can see the kids. And um, so I have not, you know, our production values uh, aren't so wonderful, and and my staff is uh, is terrible. Uh, and we can't, you know, we can't do any of what Ellen's talking about. Um, and, you know, the camera on, on my laptop and the mic are substandard. Um, I think I'm going to upgrade that tomorrow. Um, I've been using a 50-foot Ethernet uh, cable um, to plug into my modem. Um, and I don't know whether that's making a difference or not. Um, I think it may be. Um, so there's some of those tech issues. Um, you know, I really wanted to take advantage of that um, of that grant possibility, um, but since I don't have anybody to sort of grind the gears, uh, it just there just didn't seem to be a way to to, to really do incorporate that. But uh, so I I think folks are you know in our turnout we're getting forty plus. Um, some are just uh, audio, so they can't see. Um, but uh, the turnout really hasn't been bad. And so um, I think we're hanging in there with Zoom. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I would say, um, and Deb can correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I don't think there's a deadline right now on those grants. And so, I mean, if you wanted to talk about brainstorming possibilities, you know, I'd be more than willing to, to brainstorm with you on what might help you in the current moment or in long term. Um, I think, oh, for Stephanie though, um, if you were looking for more of something right now in terms of training, uh, of course you can sift, there's a lot of great YouTube tutorials you can find out there. Um, but if you were looking for something that was a, a little more of a curated collection, um, there's a, a website called Skillshares. Um, uh, let me just make sure I have the right spelling for that <laughs> for you. Skill. Uh, uh, yeah, skill just as in skill and share. Um, and so they they offer a lot of um, videos that you can find based off of anything from Adobe, uh, live streaming, all, all kinds of stuff that you could think of really. <laughs> um, um, thanks, Tom. Um, how about you, David? David, anything you want to lift up? Uh, you're muted, David. Sorry. <laughs> I just want to say that um, for the prayer thing, what we've done is is in, I've put in the online service a time of uh, um, silent prayer, lifting up the concerns that we can't share, but also the thing that we have always done in worship that I still do, and I think it's working, it's hard to tell, but I still do a responsive call to worship and a responsive psalm um, and leave enough time and then count one to three after I would have read it to make sure that I don't step in their toes, um, but really kind of acting as though it is interactive. And hopefully there, I mean, the, the, the few comments I get back are that people really enjoy the service. Um, so I'm presuming that they're participating because we're also putting that text up on the screen over you know, while, while it's being read. Um, so it's, so it's obviously over where, where I am on my face, but then it's, you know, I'll start and you share, you respond with the print, it's in bold and italics. And so it's, it takes a little extra time, but I think it gives it an opportunity for people to participate who want to. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Luann, did you have anything you wanted to lift up? Not to put you on the spot. Yeah, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, as Tom said, production value very low, right? This I am. This here's my tripod, right? This is what I've been doing since day one, and and so um, not proud of that, but that's how that's worked out. But I I guess the joy in it is that my congregation, many of whom are not comfortable 
with technology, but they are there. They are always there. Um, some of them uh, call a member who is able to get online and he puts them on speakerphone and he keeps their telephones there. Um, and, and, and they are very participatory, right? And we're doing Facebook. And so, so by the end of the service, there are, you know, maybe 70, com I don't know, there's lots of comments because yeah. people are, they're saying amen, they're offering up prayer requests, they're saying good morning and hello to each other as they, as they enter. They've, they've done such a good job of, of making it feel like community. Um, and and I'm, I'm just, I'm so proud of them and it, it, it does make us feel together. And then after worship, I spend, time and I go back and I respond, you know, to the comments and, 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 and so that has really worked out well. And, and I guess the other thing I want to share, cause I just think it's such a sweet story is that, um, I, I'm not a singer and I'm so envious of you, Casey and, and, uh, uh, uh Pastor Lewis over in the Newburgh, people who have this musical talent that they can just share when it is just them. Um, and I can't, but one day I, I thought, well, you know, I can sing the doxology. You know, it's a joyful, it, it's a joyful noise. It doesn't have to be a great noise. And um, there's a little girl down in um, uh, uh, Maryland who watches with her family. She's about one. And she has learned sign language, as many young kids do. They learn sign language as they're learning their verbal language these days. And um, I, so I went in and I sang the doxology. And her m mother wrote to me later and said that when I was done, she made the sign for more. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have great production value necessarily, right? We bring our hearts yeah. to it and just do what we can. And, um, and, and, and they do the same. And, and thank God for all of that. Well, and I think that's really, I think what I'm trying to hammer home is that that's really what I think is at the heart of it is that connection that we build with people online. And that, you know, I think adding production value, you know, that that is something we all can strive in adding to it, but I think it really starts off with what kind of base we've built for ourselves in the beginning with the people who are engaging with us online, like, like you just shared. Um, um, Martha or who am I missing? Martha at our Martha, uh, Martha Ed, okay. or, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The thing that, that has worked the best through this whole season was um, happened actually at the beginning. Um, my musician and I formed a pod together so that we could um, share music together in the sanctuary. And it was so good for both of us to actually be in the same room and, and sing together my poor musician, she's now um, in the corner, 20 feet away from the nearest other person, <laughs> worshiping all by herself in the corner and singing so that we can all have music. But um, I still, I don't think we'll ever forget the relationship that, that was formed by our feeling that our lives depended on each other's um, whatever, keeping of the, the sheltering rules. Um, and, and um, there were people who watched the service at um, first online while that was all that there was, was me and her. And she and responded to the responsible, responsive readings in an audible voice so that I knew how much time to leave for people. So I really do feel David's comment too. Um, it just, it, just even having two people there while we did all that and and in order to get sung um having her participating now is a really important thing for the congregation yeah thank you um lynn did you have a, a positive thing that you would like to lift up about um what's been going on in your uh, ministry context oh i'm uh, listening and learning thank you <laughs> thanks lynn um, Ed, I know that you mentioned that you, you weren't currently meeting, um, but did you have anything, Ed, that you wanted to lift up? I would like to thank you and, and uh, Deb for doing this. Um, 
I have two elders that sometimes when these things are put up on mine and the Presbyterian line, go back and hear them after I've made a comment to them about it. So it, it's not just what you see here, but it's also sometimes a lot of other people and it really has helped. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I, I wish she was on the call because uh, I, I saw a picture that she posted of what was going on at her church. Is um, but I don't know if you um follow uh, Dorinda at a uh, Denton Presbyterian Church. If you go on their church Facebook page, it's interesting to see what they've done in terms of uh worship. Um, if you go to their church Facebook page, you'll see that uh that they're doing a hybrid in person um worship but on there they have a projector screen where they are projecting uh, uh the people who are joining in by zoom uh so everyone is able to uh somewhat see each other i guess they ha have a camera positioned in a way that they can also look out into the congregation uh virtually so sort of you know people are finding ways to be creative um even now <laughs> when when as they they come back to in person you know i think just some of the other thoughts that i would want to throw out there for folks is you know if you because it seems like we are we're coming from different <laughs> different different spots in terms of using zoom facebook or you know we we have the ability to do something that is more produced um you know i think so i guess you know for people who are maybe still be doing zoom or facebook live um you know, I would I would say maybe a, a stretch challenge goal would be to see what it be incorporate what it would look like to incorporate something like, um, you know, if you're using Zoom to do a screen share with Google Slides or something like that to to allow people to follow along with whatever liturgy it is you're using. Um, I know for us when we've done uh, if we're using slides and worship virtually, what's what I've actually found pretty interesting is a. Uh, people are more willing to to help lead readings or parts of liturgy when they don't actually have to be up in front of a whole bunch of people. Uh, for some reason, though, they're more comfortable <laughs> recording themselves and, um, and, uh, and, and that way. So it's been, it's been great to see the engagement from people that way uh, who may not have ever been liturgists before. Um, so maybe that's something for us to, con you know, to consider as well as we go forward to see how that goes. Um, on Zoom, you if you enable it, if you have um, a paid version of Zoom, I should emphasize that it's a paid version of Zoom. Uh, you can stream to Facebook uh, using Zoom, uh, which would allow you to share your screen as well. So you're not worrying about five other different pro programs. It's just Zoom, um, but it would let you then share, you know, either videos and that people send them to you with parts of worship, or you know, you have a music person who can record themselves and send you a clip. Um, you know, I think as I heard some other things that people mentioned, um, trying to think back to who it was now. Um, you know, I think, you know, if, if we take it then to the other scale in terms of like what's going on at a uh, large, um, oh no, I'm, I'm going to, I started saying the name now and I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> uh, Larchmont? Larch? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Larchmont. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, if if we think of a church like that, or I guess even as um, our church here at Mopac now is considering moving um, indoors at some point down the line, now you know as we continue to think about it, is what does it look like to incor incorporate parts of worship that we were able to include virtually um, that we aren't able to now? Um, and I guess I would open it up to something else I wanted to comment on is that let's say for example, we're doing Zoom, right? A Zoom hybrid and we have a screen share with the slides or videos, or we have people who can help lead worship or um, who could help lead worship via Zoom if you give them the reading. Is you know, it, if you're meeting outside for worship, it, it could be as simple as plugging in that laptop or computer you have into some kind of external speaker. And uh, you know, you give the people who are there virtually a, a, a projected, um, voice so that the people who are in the, the congregation outside or even in the congregation, um, for example. Um, I know for us, it, it does feel weird the first few times <laughs> because you introduce them by saying so-and-so is going to help us uh, in our, the first scripture reading um, uh, virtually. You know, they're not there in person, but they're, they're helping us lead worship. Um, thanks, Ellen. And yeah, let's let's touch base at some point uh, if you Thank want you. To, to talk about that. So that would be great. Many thanks. Yeah, Ellen. God bless. Um, and I, 
and really, I think at the heart of it still is when we're talking about hybrid or virtual worship is 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 really what I think Luann really captured it uh, well in the beginning was or um and what she just said is, is how how we're connecting to people um, and engaging them in worship again I, I know I keep saying that, but you know sometimes it, it does feel like when you're worshiping virtually, you know it doesn't hurt to encourage people to invite them to type something in the chat on Facebook or YouTube because as Presbyterians, uh, well, most Presbyterian churches I've been to were not very vocal in worship anyway. So that doesn't always translate to <laughs> virtual worship. So it's inviting them to share something in the Zoom chat, the Facebook chat, the YouTube chat. And sometimes you may not want that, but it is an opportunity for you to encourage them and en engage people in, in that new format. Um, and so Really, besides that, I you know I I I think that these are all. It sounds like even though none of us really have it perfect, <laughs> perfect yet, you know it does sound like you know I think the encouraging thing though from from hopefully why I I hope you walk away with this is just hearing the life of things that are still really making progress in 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 this journey. And I know that it may not feel like, I know for myself, there's times where it feels like I don't have a handle on this hybrid virtual worship, but, you know, people I think are still walking away with a meaningful service, even if it's not the most polished thing in the world. Um, and, and I think just being able to see people's faces um, who they may not have seen in a while in worship is meaningful if, if it's in a hybrid or a virtual setting. So, um, you know, uh, now being with the Presbytery, I, I'm available for questions. On, um, my, well, I, de I dedicate most days to Mondays and Tuesdays. I'm all, you know, by phone or email and um, Fridays have, uh, I, I work on some other projects for them. But, um, you know, I hope based off of some of the questions I heard you say, if you want to reach out, feel free to drop me an email. And I'm looking forward to compiling everything that was shared into a written version as well that is hopefully a good guide for you all and a good resource for you all as well so um i don't know deb did you want to add anything just two things first of all uh, casey's going to do this again on thursday morning and it'll be different people unless you join which you're welcome to join and hear uh different ideas of of folks around the presbytery and and just i just want to lift this up to you the difference between, I don't know, let's say March 30th, <laughs> where, where so many folks were just, uh, I can't do this. How do I do this? It, how are we going to make this work? How is it this, that, ah, and where you are now is astounding. It's astounding. So I commend you for that. It's, it's, been, a, um, it's been a hill that a lot of us didn't really want to climb. <laughs> then one day we had no choice. So good for you. Good for you because you're still sharing the word, right? You're still sharing the word of God. It's a different way. And it gets all, particularly when we're talking about going inside and, you know, and outside and how does, uh, but we're still doing it. We're still doing it. So, so kudos kudos to all of you. I know this wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for me. I, I, I could do Zoom, but basic meeting. But other than that, God gifted me with Casey. <laughs> and you as well. And you as well. So uh, thank you, Casey, so much for, you know, Casey's number one priority in his um, position, part-time position with the Presbytery is serving the congregations. Number one, and that's all of our jobs. So please do, please do utilize his um, unfathomable talents in this area and, and, and keep doing that, keep doing that. Yeah, I mean, I would just add that if you still haven't applied for the grant yet and, Absolutely. and not have questions about it, would be more than happy to have that conversation with you. So thank you all. Thank you. Can I ask one question before we go? Yeah. Are we singing in congregations or not? Because we're not, we're trying not to read the liturgy or singing, but I hear some people are doing that. 
and my folks are eager to do it. So I just wanted to know where we were with that regulation. Um, I don't know if Deb wants to add anything, but you know, from what I've seen, you know, for our church, we don't have any responsive liturgy, even though we're meeting outside um, and singing's done by a soloist. But I know that it probably, if you look online at churches in our area, you would probably <laughs> find a whole range on, on different practices. And I, I don't know if Deb has any comment on, on what. Even a soloist, I'd be happy with a soloist. Right. I feel right. like a soloist, I think if you're able to create a safe space for that, right. I, I would see no problem with it. Okay, great. Right. I think the right. guidance is for indoors. I think the, the guidance is just uh, 12, 13 feet, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's almost untenable for, for a choir. For a choir. For a soloist, it's, it's, though. Yeah. 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 It's very okay. hard to achieve with a choir. Although, Stephanie, I've mm -hmm. heard some great humming going on. Humming? So, the humming choirs, humming oh. behind the masks, the oh. humming choir, where you okay. hum. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. I'll so and it's, very, um, it's very Teze-like. Mm. You know, it, it's very much in the chanting almost <laughs> mode of, of, of that. But at this point in time, no, we are, they're still uh, seriously encouraging us not to sing together. Okay. To sing together in the space. I think Martha had some something else. Martha? Thank you. It's one of the things that um, causes a sense of loss for us as we go indoors because we have been, we have gigantic yards up here in the country and like, like Larchmont that doesn't have a yard. Um, and, you know, we've all been 10 feet apart singing behind our masks in the yard. Um, and there was still plenty of space for everybody who was willing to join us in the yard. And, you know, people muted themselves and sang along at home because they knew that they were seconds behind everybody in the yard. Um, and being in person in the sanctuary and putting an end to that as, you know, you, you wouldn't have thought that anything we were doing during this strange time would be so attractive that you would feel like you lost it. But singing in the yard has been one of those things that, it's going to be hard to part with. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Be well. Thanks so much, Casey. Thanks, Leanne. Okay, can I ask you one quick question, actually? Yeah. I, I know that at the beginning of this uh, time, I was told, oh, on Facebook, you can invite someone in. And then no sooner did I hear that, that I heard that Facebook took that. They, did, they took the feature out. Is, is it back again? Someone? No, it's not. No. I wish it, it was a useful feature, but yeah, they, they never added it back in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no problem. One less thing. To yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you both so much. Take care. You too, Luann. Bye, Luann. Luann. I just called her Lynn. Dude. <laughs> I, I said Luann at the same time, so... Uh, oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I think so she I, <laughs> yeah. oh, on my end, at least, it sounded like we said the same thing, so... <laughs> Very well done. What do you, how are you feeling about this? Yeah, I think I'll, you know, you have a general outline and then you forget. I don't I feel like I always underestimate how long people share for, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which, yeah. is, which is fine. I mean, I think everyone shared something good. And I actually, I sort of wanted this to be a more uplifting conversation for people. So um, mm -hmm. I'll probably have a more refined version when it comes down to, uh, when it comes down to.